get down to the end and you ought to come out with a salvage value pretty close $2,500. Now, somebody talked the government into saying, you know, our stuff doesn't always really depreciate like this. The truth is, when we buy our cars, we drive them off the lot, man, they're worth almost nothing the minute we drive them away. They depreciate like this. Uncle Sam says, well, okay, I'll let you use the 200% declining balance method. And basically, it lets you say that the first year's depreciation is a whole bunch more than the second year's depreciation. And even those were a lot more than the third year depreciation and stuff like that. And so that was nice because he let us depreciate it faster. That means we got to write more off of our taxes today, this year, and so we end up with more money in our pocket. Now, an offshoot of that, although based on that, is what's known as the accelerated cost recovery system. So he's accelerating the recovery of his costs. Now, the way you get that depreciation per year is it's all tabula tabulated for you. It's all in a table. You don't have to do any work. Uh, when you take a course in economics, uh, they of course make you derive the numbers in the table, but for us, we just pick them right out of the table. Another nice thing about the ACRS method is you don't have to estimate the salvage value. Now, if you do have any salvage value when you sell it, you'll have to call that ordinary income and pay taxes on it just like anything else. Uh, then the property is classed as being of a certain class life. It's actually classed as either for government tax purposes, three year life, five year life, seven year life, ten year life, and so on. Now the reference manual only gives you three through ten, so you don't care about these two. These two are basically uh, buildings and things like that. And also, in a real economics class, you'd have to go see what the thing is and go find out whether it belongs in the three, five, or seven year class. You won't have to hear, he'll have to tell you, since he doesn't give you that list of uh, how to determine whether uh, a bag of bones is a three year life or five year life or seven year life to an archaeologist. So he'll tell you the life three, five, or seven, or whatever. As an example, say you purchase a $36,000 machine and you want to make income with it. And that the government has decided that that kind of a machine ought to last you, actually they probably figured it ought to last you seven or eight years, and they let you write it off as a five year, and they tell you so too. They say, well, we're being nice to you. All right. What is the depreciation that you get to write off each year, and what is the book value at the end of each year? Now then, um, I don't have those tables, so let me go to your reference manual and pull those tables out so we can kind of refer to them. You'll notice that for a five-year life, recovery period in years is five. At the end of the first year, they'll let you take off 40%. You say, well, it says 20%. Well, yeah, there's another trick involved here, too. Rather than letting you take off 40% big time first year, then less 32%, then less 19.2%, and so on, they only give you half of a year's worth of depreciation. And that means that you get a half year's depreciation even if you bought it in December. You get the full half a year's depreciation, which is 20%. And then the remaining numbers, 32, 19, 11, and 11, and 5.8%, those add up to 100% total. So that's one good thing or bad thing. It's a good thing if you bought the thing in December, then at the end of the first year, you get to take off a whole half a year of depreciation, even though you haven't used it a half a year. If you bought it in February, well, that's tough. You want to use this method, you still only get a half a year. You want to go back to straight line? You can do that at any time. You don't have to use this 
uh, generous method if you don't want to. So remember the numbers 20, 32, 19.2, 11.5, 11.5, 5.8. Do you remember those numbers? Good. Here they are. At the end of the first year, you just flat go to the table since it's a five-year life item, and you multiply 20% of how much it costs you, and you get to take $7,200 off, giving you a book value of 36 minus 72, 28.8. Can't beat that. At the end of the second year, you get to take 32% off. 11,250 from 28,8 gives you 17,280, and so on down the table until you don't have anything left. Total depreciation, $36,000. Now, the method uses the 200% declining balance method. I don't guess it'd be impossible if he asked you what ACRS was based on. It's also based on, I think, 150% declining balance method for some of those other lice, like 15 or 20 year lice, or 25, whatever they were. Um, so, but it's pretty nifty. You get to depreciate the asset quickly during its early life when it really is depreciating quickly. Although you only get a half a year for the first year. Now, this method also uses the straight line depreciation method in that at some time, I have to do this thing like this to draw this, at some time it's possible that the straight line method might actually give you more depreciation than the uh, ACRS method. And I think I got that upside down. It doesn't make any difference. Let me just say that if the depreciation given by a straight line method, here's what I should have done, I should have shown it like that straight line. If at any time the straight line method gives you higher depreciation values than ACRS, Uncle Sam permits you to switch to the straight line method until you run out of things to depreciate. That's why on this chart, this table, you see nice big depreciations, nice big depreciations, nice big depreciations, and then all of a sudden they're the same and the same. Right around this time, the straight line method actually gave you a better depreciation, a higher withholding tax, and Uncle Sam says if you want to switch back, you can. He won't ever let you switch the other way. Once you declare straight line on, a, on an item, you're stuck with that from then on. And then this last one just is whatever it takes to depreciate it out. And these are the numbers in the table, see? But you can tell when it became straight line because the numbers got to be straight line numbers. Okay, on the next page is just what we've already discussed. Uh, if you purchase it in February, you only get a half year's depreciation. If you do it in December, you still get a half year's, uh, and at some time later, you can switch from ACRS to straight line. All right, now then, how would you get money for something so that you can pay for capital improvements on an item? One way, you might go to the taxpayers and say, we're going to sell a bond and you're going to have to pay us back uh, and that bond will repair something for the next million years something like that uh, that would be where n is infinity and uh, n is infinity isn't in the table anywhere so let's say we have a project I'm going to go ask the taxpayers to give us some present money we'll do that by selling a bond and the amount that we will try and get from the bond will be enough to repair a dam for the next million years. And we anticipate that every year from this money, we will have to extract $120,000 in order to repair the dam forever. We don't ever plan on knocking it down and building a new one like we do with a building. So, 
In order to find what you need, all you got to do is take one of the A's and divide it by I. In our case, the interest rate, the nominal interest rate, the 6% per year if the bank is going to compound yearly. You divide $120,000 by 6%, and that gives you $2 million. Dollars. 